So um, let's continue our NFL refresher. We've done the AFC North and the AFC South, and we are going to do the AFC West today. So without further ado, the first team we are going to be talking about is the Denver Broncos. All righty, y'all. This could be a very, very good team to keep your eye on throughout this uh, throughout the season. They finished seven and nine last year. Not bad. They brought in Drew Locke. They had Drew. They had Joe Flacco. I really thought Drew Joe Flacco would really kind of prove himself and reemerge as a good quarterback here in 2019. But he didn't. Um, the man will forever be known as winning a Super Bowl and stealing a hundred million dollars from the Baltimore Ravens because the man was not good. He just kind of caught fire in his playoff run and ends up with the Super Bowl. And uh, ends up with a $100 million contract and just never good ever since then. So, well done to Joe Flacco getting your bag and getting out. That's what he did. He got the ring. He got the bag. And he's like, "Man, eh, I'm good. I'll just be trash for the rest of the year. So, um, they were rocking with him a lot. He wasn't getting it done at all. They bring in Drew Locke. And he had a pretty good five-game stretch. They brought him in for five games, 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, three interceptions, 64% completion. Those are all good numbers. Um, you know, you really, you know, good completion percentage in the NFL is about 61 to 64. Every, anything over 65 is very, very good. So him at 64% is very good. Two to one touchdown interception ratio, very good. 1,000 yards, a little light in five games. If, you, you know, if you do a full 16 games, that only goes about like 3,300 yards. That's You really want to be above 4,000 if you're not a dual threat quarterback, which he is not. But he's got a good arm. He's getting good weapons here. They uh, they drafted Jerry Judy, y'all. One of the best receivers in the league played for Alabama. 2,400 yards, 24 touchdowns in two seasons. Absolutely magnificent what he did in Alabama. So that's going to be a great weapon there for a young Drew Locke. A cannon arm and a fast wide receiver. Look out for Denver Broncos. They didn't really lose anybody. They lost Joe Flacco, which isn't really a loss, but they did lose Derek Wolf on the defensive end position, so that may hinder their defense just a little bit. But they add uh, A.J. Boye from Jacksonville. That's going to be a good upgrade in the backfield for the Broncos. And um, they get um, they get Melvin Gordon, another offensive piece. So um, well done to them, Melvin Gordon, coming from the Chargers. So now they have a good running game and a good passing game. It's just going to be if Drew Locke is able to make that next step in this isn't really even year number two for him this is going to be kind of year number one so we can't judge him too hard but as long as he's kind of good and he's just being a game manager out there this Denver Broncos team could be very very good um, Vic Vangio he's a defensive minded coach he was a defensive coordinator his entire career bounced around the league a little bit played for about I think he played for the 49ers in Carolina or not played for he coached for the uh, the Panthers and the 49ers he got his first head coaching job last year in 2019 and he went seven and nine well done especially when you're you know you're trying to choose between a veteran that really hasn't proven himself or a rookie that's trying to prove himself and you go with the rookie and it kind of works out a little bit seven and nine not bad for Vic Vangio so he's going to be able to shore up that defense even more and then let the offensive coordinator handle all this talent so really really look out for this Denver Broncos um, and then they also have Cor uh, Cortland Sutton as another wide receiver who put up a thousand yards and six touchdowns last season Fantastic. They have weapons on this Denver Broncos team, so don't sleep on the Broncos. We're, we'll see if they have an easy schedule, and um, you know if they do, they probably won't win the division because, unfortunately, they – do still have to go up against the Chiefs twice but um, you know a wild card spot for sure if they have a you know a favorable schedule so um, yeah that's all their additions that's all I wanted to talk about so let's get right into their schedule and count their wins and we'll mark it in our official prediction here so let's count them up let's see how favorable this schedule is for a emerging quarterback with some very very good talent all right, so they have to open up at home against Tennessee. That's not a bad opponent. Tennessee did make that deep playoff run last year. Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill coming back. They both got paid. This is a winnable game for them. I do want to call it a win. I really, really do. But but it's Drew Locke. Doesn't have that kind of preseason games to kind of work out just a little bit in. 
it may just take a little bit for this team to come together. So by week one, you have an established good Tennessee Titans team versus a Broncos team that just brought in a new running back, a new wide receiver. Drew Locke is still trying to um, establish himself in a starter. He he only played five games. Yes, they were very, very good and an impressive five games, but it's still only five games. So we can't. I don't know if we give up. And it's, and it's a Monday night game at 10 o'clock tip. I mean, woo, or 10 o'clock tip, our kickoff. It's going to be a tough game. I do want to root for the Broncos in this game, but I think we have to give them a loss here, unfortunately. Um, but then they have to go into Pittsburgh. Big Ben coming back. I do like the Broncos team better than the Pittsburgh Steelers. That Steelers defense is very good, though. They may give Drew Locke a little bit of trouble. I don't know if I can give them any wins here in these first two games. And then they have to face Tampa Bay, and we can't give them a win there because I'm going to bet on Brady. If I'm going to bet on anybody, I'm going to bet on Brady in that fantastic offense. We just mentioned at the top of the show, Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Gronk, LaShawn McCoy is a backup running back. I mean, you saw what he did with the Chiefs as kind of like the backup and good numbers. So, Ooh, a tough schedule really off the rip. Not great, but we can give them a win against the Jets. I'll give them that. I don't know. I don't think that's Jets team. I hate Adam Gase. I don't think he can coach, and I don't think this Jets team is just overall a very good team. So we give them a win against the Jets. Patriots, it's in New England. It's still Bill Belichick, and it's Cam Newton. I don't know if we can give them a win there. We'll give them a win against the Dolphins. They can't beat the Chiefs. They come off the bye. They have the Falcons. That's a winnable game. Winnable game. I'll give it to them. They face the, the Raiders. That's a winnable game. I'll give it to them. The Chargers, they're at home. Four o'clock kickoff kind of later in the season um, after the bye. I think that's going to be a competitive game. We can give them a win there. Um, the Saints, I can't give them a win there. We can't give them a win. I, I can't even let them split against the season series against the Chiefs. Um Carolina Panthers, um, you know, late in the season as well, bringing in a new head coach and um, having Teddy Bridgewater start. This is going to be a close game, but um, I'm going to give the Broncos the benefit of the doubt just because of that kind of hard schedule at the beginning. So we'll give them a win against the Panthers. The Bills at home, that's good for them. That is good for them. If it was in Buffalo, I'd probably give them the loss. But the Bills have to come up to mile high. And um, this is going to be another competitive game. Close game. Really could go either way. But I will give the Broncos the benefit of the doubt. We give them the win there. I think we have um, split the season series. Or no, the Chargers really aren't that good. Um, yeah, I, I really... Uh, are they that good? We will talk about them a little later. I have my notes on them. Do we say they split? They split. They split these series. So we gave them the win there. I don't think they win when they have to go to L.A. Um, but then they beat the Raiders. I think they beat the Raiders twice. So what is that, eight wins? You know, it's just tough because they, it, it's not a very good, easy schedule for this team so unfortunately eight and eight there is a little bit of wiggle room for a nine and seven potentially um, if they can sweep the chargers you can give them an extra win but it may be an early game against tennessee or pittsburgh you can add another win but just i mean tough opponents kind of off the top tennessee pittsburgh tampa bay i mean it, this pittsburgh team is all going to depend on how well big ben's going to recover from that injury and if he's going to look like vintage big ben so but Tennessee, Steelers, Tampa Bay off the rip. Jets are easy. Um, Patriots could could be a problem because Bill Belichick is still there. You still have to face the Chiefs twice. You have to face the Saints. You have to face the Bills and Panthers. I think they win those games, but those are still tough games. So unfortunately for this up-and-coming Denver team, don't sleep on Denver. If they don't have a particularly good season, they should have a very good 20. 21 season because they do have the talent drew lock just needs to really establish himself get a full 16 season 16 game season under his belt and this team really should be back to competing for playoff spots and championships um so denver improves the eight and eight this year still probably misses the playoffs but this is a good team to watch going forward if you're a broncos fan um really um really things are looking up for you guys so we'll have it officially at eight and eight this season 
Um, <clears throat> all right, our second team in the AFC West is the Kansas City Chiefs. And do we even really need to talk about them? Defending Super Bowl champions, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. They're the combination made in heaven. Uh, made in heaven. Andy Reid has been looking for this court, this type of quarterback, his entire career. Got it a little bit in Michael Vick. Just a just a little bit was able to uh, play with him a little bit. Um, but now he's got Patrick Mahomes in the prime of his career they locked him up they gave him a billion dollars they said you'll play for us forever and Patrick Mahomes said all right I can rock with that I'm a chief for life and they locked him up so um this team they lost LaShawn McCoy we saw they lost Spencer Ware Kendra Fuller they lost a, a couple of players but they drafted um so they lose they lose LeSean McCoy, but they draft a, a running back in the draft from LSU, uh, Clyde edwards Hellar. Um, he rushed for 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns last season, so they're getting even better. Um, their defense is still kind of the same. Didn't lose too much on that end. They still have their captain, Tyron Matthew, who I love a lot. I really wish the Dolphins would have drafted him, actually. Um, you can go back to my Twitter. My personal Twitter, I said it. I'm a big a I'm a big Tyron Matthew fan, and uh, you know he's really getting it done for this Chiefs defense. So, not really too much to talk about um, for the Super Bowl champions. They're still fantastic in offense. Defense may have taken a little hit, a little bit of a hit. Um, <clears throat> here they go. I mean, lost a couple of defensive players. Not nothing too notable um so their defense is still kind of i mean the, all the pieces are kind of returning besides LaShawn mccoy and spencer ware but they kind of made up in the draft losing Sean mccoy so this team is still good they're ready to rock and they're ready to repeat so let's see how easy their schedule is here open up at houston that really should be a win at home at houston thursday that is going to be the game that the first game to really tip off the season cannot wait for it next thursday y'all get prepared get prepared we we will probably watch that game live here so if you got nothing to do you want to hang around us uh, other fans that want to talk to this game we'll break it down live here um, at twitch.tv slash takes by fans thursday night football should be a win for the Chiefs. Um, Houston does have a little bit of revenge they're looking for. They were up 24 nothing in the playoffs, and uh, the Chiefs put up 51. <laughs> 51, and they win, what was it, like 51-34. Just, uh, so they're going to be looking for revenge, but overall this Chiefs team, I mean, they're still better. You still have to, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is better than Deshaun Watson, and Andy Reid is a hell of a lot better than Bill O'Brien. So we'll give them a win there. The Chargers shouldn't be too much to handle. Ravens, that's going to be a very fun game to watch. Monday Night Football, ooh boy, week three, Monday Night Football. Um, probably give them the win again. I mean, overall, this Chiefs team is better than the Ravens. Um, New England Patriots have to face, that's probably a win. Vegas, that's a win. Buffalo, at, at in Buffalo, that's going to be fun. I may even go to this game, or if I could, I mean... We'll, we'll see. So far, some teams are already saying the first two games you can't go to. But that, that would be a fun game to go to um, Thursday Night Football. Oh, my God. Woo, Thursday Night Football in Buffalo. Man, you already know how wild the Buffalo fans are and their tailgates. So Thursday Night Football, when you're facing the Super Bowl champs, that game could get really out of hand. I think um, if there's fans in the stadium in this game, it could really – it, it, it would actually make the difference in this game. So we'll, we'll assume no fans will be in attendance, unfortunately, for the Bills. But then if they were, I could see the Bills um, upsetting. So, so far, I actually have to give them a loss against this Ravens team because other than that, I mean, this team's going to go 16-0 maybe. So um, win against Texans, Chargers, loss against the Ravens, win against the Patriots, Raiders, Bills, Broncos, Gents, Panthers, really, really e kind of easy three-game stretch here for them. Um, coming off the bye, they don't split against the Raiders, so they win that game. I'll have them losing in Tampa Bay just so they don't go 16-0. and um, They didn't go 16-0 and last year, so I don't really suspect that they would do it this year. Um, once again, beating the Broncos, I don't think they split. They beat the Dolphins. They lose against the Saints. They beat the Falcons, and they beat the Chargers. So a favorable schedule for this Chiefs team. Three tough games, but that's really it. Um, easy, easy games in Miami, the Jets, 
maybe the Panthers. I mean, they've got, you know, a whole new team, you know, new quarterback, new coach. So we'll see if they're able to kind of get it together early in the season. But a favorable schedule, the three hardest teams are the Ravens, um, Bucks, and the Saints. So once again, I mean, they could definitely repeat another 12-4 and four season. We have it officially marked at 13-3. and three, But um, once again, this team will win the division. They will go to the playoffs. They most likely will go to the Super Bowl, and we'll see how it plays out then. But, uh, yeah, this team is uh, still very good. Still good, which I'm pissed about because the Dolphins are still in the same conference. So it doesn't look like we'll get to the Super Bowl anytime soon. All right, let's move on to the Raiders now. All right, new stadium, new location. You still have um, John Gruden. Don't know how good of a coach he actually is. They went 7-9 and nine last year. They still have Derek Carr. And, man, if you look at his stats, this man is amazing. It just doesn't translate to wins, unfortunately. Last year, 70% completion, 4,000 yards, 21 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Those are magnificent numbers, y'all. They just don't translate to wins, unfortunately. 7-9. and nine, you saw so he's a um, Derek Carr is a career average like 64% completion which is very very good so th- he can pl- he could definitely play quarterback it just doesn't translate to wins and I don't really understand why um, they add Nelson Aguilar at receiver not um, a breakout name he only played 10 games last season and um, I think he put up like 400 yards so not great Um He's never gotten a 1,000-yard season, Nelson Aguilar. So not a great addition at wide receiver, but a solid, solid 2-3 option. Um, they get Corey Littleton. They got so many players. They basically got their entire defense off of free agency. Corey Littleton, Raekwon McMillan from the Dolphins. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. He is a solid player. Um, and then you got Carl um, Nassib. Um they do lose, or no, they do add Marcus Mariota and Jason Witten. Um, Jason Witten cannot play anymore, unfortunately. He couldn't broadcast. He tries to come back to the Cowboys. Couldn't really make it work too great. He had, like, one good game where he put up, like, two touchdowns, but that was, like, the first game. But then he's getting banged up a little bit. So expect Jason Witten to be a non-factor here in Oakland. And then they bring in Marcus Mariota just as a backup. His career as a starter is unfortunately over. Um, Marcus Mariota would probably never challenge their car for that spot because their car is good. If you look at his numbers, they are very good. They just don't translate to wins, and Mariota can't really win either. So um, kind of questionable head scratch names to bring in Mariota and wait, and I don't get it. Um, they do lose Vontez Perfect on the defensive side, which may be a blessing, but that is an enforcer for your defense that you are losing, but kind of a headache that you are also getting off the team. Um, they do draft um, Henry Russ, wide receiver from Alabama, to try and help out Derek Carr just a little bit more. Um, he got overshadowed by Jerry Judy, obviously, so he didn't put up 1,000 yards. He put up 700 yards in his two seasons, 18 touchdowns in those two seasons as well. So, you know, decent receiver, just kind of got overshadowed by Jerry Judy. And then they also draft a quarter or cornerback, um, Dannon Arnett, from Ohio State, you know, good player. We'll see how he translates here. You know, nothing great in the stats column there in college, but playing in a premier program in Ohio State, you're taking them in, uh, I think it was a, was it a first round pick? May have been a first round pick for them. So just um, decent talent. How good is this Raiders team? Derek Carr, he probably should still be playing good, but not going to translate the wins. I don't know if we buy John Gruden as a coach just yet either, but a new stadium, this team is going to be looking to win now. So we'll see how it all plays out. Let's look at their schedule. Unfortunately, once again, they are in the conference, the same division as the Chiefs, so not great in that aspect. Alrighty, here we go. They have to open up at Carolina and... I don't think they win that game. I don't think they win it. I do like Matt Rule as a coach, and I love Teddy Bridgewater. Um, You still got Christian McCaffrey on that squad. You're in Carolina first game. You're kind of going to be looking to that Saints game at the home opener. 
Um, so maybe they kind of overlooked that game, but um, I don't know if they beat the Panthers, so I can't give them a win there. I can't. I mean, the only thing that this team has over the Saints is that home opener, that atmosphere. But once again, there's going to be no fans, so that's going to affect it a lot as well. So can't give them a, a win against the Saints. Can't give them a win against the Patriots. Can't give them a win against the Bills. Can't give them a win against the Chiefs. Are they going to go 0-5 into the bye? I think they may. I think they may. Then they have to come out of the bye and face the Bucs. Oh, my God. 0-6, I think. That's tough. This is a tough schedule for this Raiders team. Oh, my God. This is a tough schedule all around. Holy cow. Um, Browns. I guess we give them a win. We have to give them a win sometime, right? First win comes against, what is that, like week eight against the Browns. They probably split against the Chargers. They split against the Broncos. Um, they don't beat the Chiefs. They don't beat the Falcons. They beat the Jets. They, I'll give them a win against the Colts, I guess. Splitting against the Chargers, so they don't win that. They beat the Dolphins, and then they split against the Broncos. So this is a t this is a real tough schedule for the Raiders, man. Real tough. But uh, six and eleven? No, that's not six and ten. Six and ten. Um, real, real brutal, brutal, brutal. Toughest schedule we've seen yet here on our NFL refresher. Panthers, Saints, Patriots, Bills, Chiefs, all leading up to the bye, and then out of the bye, you have to face the Bucks, and then you have to face the Chiefs again, and then you got to face. That's really yeah for a tough of uh, tough opponents, but man, this is not a favorable favorable schedule, especially for a team that's proven that uh, you know they can't really be better than seven and nine. So, not good, not good for the Raiders. Um, their one silver lining would have been um, their home crowd stadium because a new stadium, you're going to want to pe get people in and rocking and really celebrating it. And with no fans here, you really can't do that. So. Not a good season here for the Raiders. Kind of taking a step back here from 7 and 9 to 6 and 10. Alrighty, let's finish off with the last team in the division. We'll go with the Chargers. Alrighty, <clears throat> here we go. What do the Chargers got? Well, they lose Phillip Rivers. They lose Melvin Gordon. They lose Derek Watt on the defensive end of the ball. They lose Travis Benjamin, and they lose Russell Okun on the line. So you're probably thinking, oh, this team's going to lose. Well, they added a little bit of talent as well. They get Tyrod Taylor in free agency. He's going to be the starting quarterback. Anthony Lynn came out and said, hey, he's going to be the starter. They just they drafted Justin Herbert, which I don't think is a great quarterback. Uh, 3,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, 6 interceptions on 66% completion uh, last year. Uh, 3,400 yards in college is very low. 66% completion is kind of average. 32 touchdowns is, is good. Six interceptions is good as well. Um, but, you know, not not ready to start, I would say. And then uh, they add a little bit on the defense as well through the draft. They get uh, Kenneth Murray, another first-round pick. They had two first-round picks. They get Jerson Herbert for the offensive side and Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma, linebacker on the defensive side of the ball. So, you know, once again, you know, shoring up that defense just a little bit through the draft. So Tyler, Tyrod Taylor starting, they still have weapons. They still, this team still have weapons. They have Tyrod Taylor at quarterback, Austin Eckler for running back, who's a fantastic kind of two-way player out of the backfield. They still have Keenan Allen at receiver. They still have Hunter Henry at the tight end position. They still have a very good defense. Joey Bosa on the line. Melvin Ingram, Melvin Ingram also on the line. And then you got Chris Harris Jr. in the backfield. So this team is still good. They still have good pieces. They got Phillip Rivers out, who really on the tail end of his career, trying to uh, revitalize it there in um, <clears throat> in Indianapolis. But Tyrod Taylor, when he was the starting quarterback for the Bills, not bad. 61% completion in three seasons. Um, he had a uh, 3,000-yard seasons every every. Um, every year that he was playing, so decent there. 51 touchdowns, 16 interceptions in three years. That's very, very, very good. Um, what do I got here? 17 fumbles, though, in those three years, so he is turning the ball over kind of a lot. 
500 yards rushing every season for the Bills as well. So, you know, 3,600 yards through the air on, on the ground, not terrible. He's got a good deep ball. His accuracy is good. He's going to be a good mentor for Justin Herbert, and he's going to try and win some games here to kind of keep the starting job as long as possible. Justin Herbert will not start this year unless Tyrod Taylor is not getting it done in the wins category. So we will keep an eye on that. But Austin Eckler, a 500-yard rushing last year with a thousand yards receiving absolutely magnificent 11 total 11 touchdowns total for the man we had Keenan Allen who had 1200 yards receiving with Austin Eckler a thousand yard receiving that's very very good for Keenan Allen he put up six touchdowns and then we have Hunter Henry another weapon for the tight end position uh 600 yards five touchdowns so this team has talent Anthony Lynn is a decent head coach. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, he just needs to kind of step up a little bit. Kind of a little if he had 22 wins in those three seasons in Buffalo. So kind of like eight and six, seven and nine, seven and eight, you know, kind of mediocre seasons. And um, so we'll see how he's able to kind of lead this pretty good Chargers team um, here. Um, once again, they're in the same division as the Chiefs. That's not helping anybody. Uh, so let's go into their schedule. It doesn't look like I have it pulled up, but I can pull it up really quickly. Here we go. We'll get it. We'll get it real quick. Don't worry, y'all. Um, one Google search away, and it pops right up. I got the keywords down. I know who I like to go to. Here it is. Bingo, bango, and we're up and running. So here it is. This is their schedule. They have to open up at the Bengals. Fantastic start here. You've got the Cincinnati Bengals. We talked about them already in our NFL refresher a couple days ago. But they got Joe Burrow trying to um, acclimate him back into the offense or into the offense as a starter. So we can give them a win against the Bengals. Not going to beat the Chiefs. They could potentially beat this uh, Panthers team. They're at home, so we will give them a win. They can't beat the Bucks. They probably won't beat the Saints. Oh my God, that is tough. Um, at Tampa Bay and at New Orleans, tough two two game stretch here. Hopefully they don't implode. But I don't see them winning any of these games. Um, they beat the Jets. They beat the Dolphins. They beat the Jets. They beat the Raiders, so um, kind of a little iffy here at the start. You know, little win, loss, win, loss, loss. But then, really, really, then it gets easy. Jets, Dolphins, Jags, and Raiders, all very easy games going into the bye. We'll have them split against the Broncos. They won't win at the Broncos, but they'll win at home, so we won't give them a win here yet. Um, they probably don't beat the Bills in uh, Buffalo. Tyrod Taylor is going to have to want something to prove if he is still the starter at this point, which I suspect he will with six wins. Um, so that could be a good narrative and storyline to really kind of keep an eye on. Um, but they probably don't beat the Bills. They probably don't beat the Patriots. I can see them beating the Falcons at home. Um I don't think they split against the Raiders, so we'll give them a win there again. We give them a win against the Broncos, and then they have to face the Chiefs to close out the season. Chiefs may already have everything wrapped up at this point, but if we're ju we just have to kind of go on what we know already, and that that this Chiefs team is very very good. So um, nine and seven, not bad for the Chargers, upgrading their win total from five to nine. They went five and eleven last season. They go nine to seven this season. Good, good, good step. I would say potentially able to kind of grab a playoff spot in the AFC. You kind of need ten wins to get a wild card spot. Um, in the NFC, you kind of need eleven. Um, but um, yeah, Chargers nine and seven. Um, they have a chance to kind of steal a tenth game. I would say maybe if they sweep the Broncos or if they win against the Bills. So. Definitely in playoff position here. Decent schedule. Hardest games are obviously the Chiefs, Bucks, Saints. Um, so that's four pretty much losses unless they can steal a game. I don't know if they're that good enough to do. But, you know, four tough, tough games that they most likely will lose. But overall, not bad. They've got, you know, their schedule. You know, this is a good break here. Going into the bye, four really easy, good games going into the bye. And then you get the Broncos coming out. So, um, nine and seven, I can definitely see it. Um, you know, if they and if they sweep the season series against the Broncos, then they go ten and six and potentially have a wild card spot. Um, all right, so that is our NFL refresher for the AFC West today. Um, let's end the show on our moneymaker, y'all. I mean, we have back to back, baby. Let's refresh what we did yesterday. We had Heat plus five and a half. They went outright, um, so no worries there. And then we had the Thunder plus five and a half. So they lose by two. We, I mean, look at this tweet. I mean, could I have called it any better? I don't think I could have. I think the Rockets win. They did, but. 
going to take the Thunder because five and a half points in game seven, points are points. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, I know what I'm talking about here, folks. I'm not just talking for my health, man. There's a reason why I'm starting the show. There's a reason why I'm talking sports because I kind of know what I... I kind of know what I'm talking about. Not to toot my own horn, but we went back to back. We're looking to make it back to back to back. So let's see what we got on tap today. Um, Raptors, Celtics. All right, Celtics still up 2-0. We're still going to lead with the Celtics. Overall, this team is just a little bit better. They they have superstars. Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker, Raptors. You know, Nick Nurse is trying his best. I mean, you know, their players are good. Um... Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet are very good names. I don't know if they're superstar names. Um, and that's kind of what's coming out so far in this series as we're watching it. Um, Celtics probably are not going to be favored anymore, unfortunately. That time is over. So if it's if it's Celtics minus one, we probably still take it. If it's Raptors, if it's the only way I take the Raptors, really, if it's plus five, and I don't think it's going to be that high just yet. It may get there in game four, but um, I could see Celtics minus one, minus two, and I think I'm still good to take it, man. I do like the Celtics team just a little bit better than the Raptors. We were on the Raptors. We thought the series would go back and forth, back and forth, game for game for game for game. But after we watched game one, even though they got blown out, I, I'm not even taking that into consideration. The blowout in game one, just the star power of the Celtics, they will get it going. And, um, you know, I just like them a little bit better. So I think this, season, this series is a little over quicker than I originally thought, probably four, maybe – or. Possibly five, maybe four, but we're still going to be rocking with the Celtics here. And I think the spread may fall down to Celtics minus one. And then we get game one, Nuggets, Clippers. I don't know what this line is going to open up at. Maybe Clippers minus five and a half. Poss it wouldn't surprise me if it's all the way up to seven. Um, Jamal Murray and this Nuggets team just went seven. Tough, grueling, brutal games. They were down 3-1. So you really have to take that... Um, their fatigue into consideration here. They got no extra time off. They just played on Tuesday. Quick turnaround to Thursday. Clippers had a little extra time off for um, able to kind of take care of business against the Mavs rather quickly. Did go six, but, you know, hey, six is better than seven, right, than the Nuggets did. So Clippers are going to favor from a little extra rest. This Clippers team is obviously better than the Nuggets, and um, I expect it to be probably Clippers minus five to seven, and I think we take it here in game one. Um, no disrespect to Jamal Murray and Jokic, but, uh, you know, the Clippers, they have Kawhi and Paul George, and uh, yeah. So let's see what these official lines are, and then we'll make our official picks here. Here we go. Let me say this. I think... Um, the Nuggets could potentially give this Clippers team maybe a little bit of trouble because um, Jamal Murray and Jokic are kind of like Don or Doncic and Porzingis, which the Clippers kind of struggled in in round one. Um, if Krista Porzingis didn't get ejected in round one or game one, they probably win that game. And then if he doesn't get injured in those last uh, two two games in the series, they could potentially have won those games as well. But Jamal Murray would need to step up and be a little bit more consistent. He had four great games in that uh, series against the Jazz, don't get me wrong, but he also had three not-so-great games, putting up 14, 12, and 17. Um, but Jokic is really the the constant score for this Nuggets team that uh, the the Clippers are going to be looking for to wrap up a little bit. The Clippers do have better defenders for Jokic though. Rudy Gobert, you know, he was good against Jokic down low, but once he got to that three point line, you know, he really couldn't guard anybody. So the Clippers do have an answer for that. So we can. This Nuggets team isn't going to be as good as the Mavericks were, um, but I could see it kind of being a little problem for the Clippers. I don't think it will, but if the if the Clippers do struggle in the series, that is going to be the reason. All right, now here we go. Official line: Celtics plus two still. Oh my God! Yes, yes, yes. We'll take that all day. I love it. I love it. I love it. I cannot believe that they are still giving the Celtics the points here. Um, we'll take that all day. Whew, man. I'm. I was wrong. And then, oh my God, I was wrong about this one. Clippers minus nine. Woof, woof. If this was, 
If the Nuggets were a little bit more rested, I would take the Nuggets plus nine, but I am going to count fatigue heavily into this game. Um, you know, it's a game one of a series, so you kind of you kind of want to take the points just so you can kind of see how this series is going to shake out. But but the fatigue from the Nuggets, I think, may it, it is going to sway my decision here. So. Clippers minus nine. It's tough to swallow nine in an opening game series, but Nuggets, they're tired. They gave it all they got, and we saw what happened in game seven. They were gassed. They put up, what, 81 points? Clippers, they're not going to, uh, they're going to put up a lot more than 81. They'll put up 112. Uh, the over is 223 and a half. That is still a little high for me to take. Um, I know Clippers are going to get theirs. Are the Nuggets going to get theirs as well? I don't know. So we are going to ride it out. We're going to swallow it. Hey, why not? We went back to back. You know, we have nothing left to prove, right? <laughs> no, of course. Of course we have everything to prove still. You know, we're looking to win every single game, every single day here, folks. You know, our our win percentage, our pick percentage is about like 72%, I would say. We're always hitting at least two of three on our moneymaker when we were picking three games. And, you know, we, we hit a couple of times as well. So we're back to back. Trying to go back to back to back. This is the official takes by fans moneymaker for today. We're going to take the Celtics plus two. That's easy money. If you want to just bet that that straight up, make a lot of money. But if you want to beef up those odds just a little bit, take the Clippers minus nine. I think this is the solid bet here. Nuggets plus nine is very, very appealing. It is. Don't get me wrong. But the fatigue, the fatigue, they only had one day rest. And it's really not a rest because you have to kind of get back into the gym and film study. This is a whole new team you have to kind of prepare for. While the Clippers were off already preparing, you were trying to take care of business in a game seven against the Jazz. So we'll kind of count that against the Nuggets heavily. So Clippers minus nine, I think, is the best play there. Well, alrighty, that is it for today. Uh, tomorrow we will continue our NFL refresher. We'll finish up the AFC side with the AFC East, um, and then we'll start getting into the NFC on Saturday. We do. We will be on Saturday. We will be back on Saturday, uh, noon Eastern as well. Twitch.tv slash takes by fans. So come out and watch then. And uh, you know, follow me on Twitter. Be a part of the conversation. Let me know what y'all think um, at takes by fans. You know, this is called takes by fans for a reason. I want to know what you guys are saying. You know, but we do have to get to those followers first you guys have to you know start engaging a little bit with me so i can you know you know feature you guys on the show because i do want to have that as well so um you know yeah thanks for watching it's been fun 